From beautiful Cipriani's down here in Midtown Manhattan, I'm Mark Gollum, and I'm coming to you now from a gala that is in celebration of the Rabin Medical Center, one of Israel's great hospitals in Tel Aviv. This, by the way, is a panorama in Tel Aviv of the various buildings that are part of the Rabin Medical Center. It is an extraordinary hospital complex, and all the people who are here today, tonight, are really here to show their support for a major institution of Jewish life, of Israeli life. We'd like to talk to some of the people who are here, introduce them to you, and then show you the program tonight, celebrating again the Rabin Medical Center in Tel Aviv. The great honor of standing with Ron Cohn and, and Dr. Oppenheim. And by the way, his role, explain it to our audience. What has Dr. this doctor Oppenheim done? Dr. Oppenheim created the Rabin Medical Complex. Amazing. When did you do that? I don't know when I do it, but I'm just, I'm so sorry that my mother is not here to listen to these wonderful words. Now, I was a CEO of Rabin 17 years, and we succeeded to do something there and to create a wonderful hospital. And this is the right moment to say to Ron Cohen and all our friends here in New York a big thank you because nothing but nothing could happen without them. And Ron is a real treasure to all of us. That's lovely. Dr. Oppenheimer, what was your own medical specialty? I'm a, a, a family practitioner. I did years in emergency medicine and then I did a second degree in business administration. And, uh, and, my, and my best specialty, yes. I'm a wonderful grandfather. <laughs> how, how many? How many, Saba? Two. Two. Mazal Tov. Thank you. Where were you from? Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv? Yeah. And do you live in Tel Aviv still? No. I was born in Tel Aviv, raised in Tel Aviv, but now I live in Herzliya. It's about 10 yes. minutes from Tel Aviv. Lovely, lovely. One more question for you in general. Are you comfortable at the moment with the quality of health care, not simply at the Rabin Medical Center, mm. but in terms, you know, in America right now, everybody's concerned about Obamacare and the quality of health care in America. How do you rate for the audience who are watching you now on Shalom TV? What would you, how would you describe the quality of medical care in Israel? Look, first of all, as a former CEO, as a manager in my blood, I am always not satisfied of what we have. And we as human beings, we have to always to improve and to make better. But Israel has one of the best healthcare systems in the world, in the Western world. Uh, and uh, we are very proud about this system. There's a lot to do, of course, but it's a wonderful system. And if I look at a, a regular Israeli citizen, uh, who is not wealthy and his cousin is not uh, the CEO of the next hospital, what he gets when he's sick, he gets a wonderful and a very good service. Uh, and um, it's one, Israel is a wonderful country to come and not to use the hospitals. <laughs> yes. So please do it. By the way, I will tell you this. I had occasion to be in an Israeli hospital in Jerusalem. One of the things that impressed me, doctor, was the extent to which every person who came in that, or that, that hospital door, whether it was a Jewish Israeli, an Arab Israeli, Palestinian, did not matter. There was a way in which the medical profession treats patients, and it doesn't matter where they're from, what their economics, economics and I'm not pretending that it's not better to have money, but what did impress me was the extent to which there's a sort of an equalizing leveler in the hospital, and I wonder if that's also been your experience at Rabin Medical Center. Totally. We uh, say that uh, medicine is a bridge to peace. Politicians will sign the agreement, yes. but we as a people, yes. we must do peace between the two nations. And we, in all hospitals, not only in Rabin, but in all hospitals in Israel, we treat, I'm not talking about Israeli Arabs. There are citizens like me, there's no difference whatsoever. I'm talking about Palestinians from Gaza and the West Bank. 
thousands are coming every year to Rabin Medical Center. And we are very proud about it. And uh, let's hope that this is the beginning of a new era in the Middle East. All of us want it. Let's hope. I am very proud to meet you. It's Thank wonderful you. that I can share you with the American audience. Thank you. I wish you kotuva hatslacha, many, many All years of great success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What makes you proudest, both of the hospital and your involvement with it? Uh, the ability for the administrators of the hospital to navigate through the Israeli health system and create such a great hospital. That's what makes me proud. When you look at what Israel is today, and you've seen the ark run, what gives you the most sense of pride? Um, I think it's a rare occasion. I don't know if it ever happened that in such a short order, a country became a country and such an important country. And for seven million people to be on the front page of the papers every day, I think it's quite an accomplishment. You're making a wonderful contribution to Jewish life in the state of Israel. It's a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you for coming. Yaron Cohen, at this gala celebrating the Rabin Medical Center, I have a great pleasure of speaking to one of my favorite people in the world, Ido Aharoni, who is the Consul General for the state of Israel here in New York. And Ido, uh, you know better perhaps than anybody in this room the contribution the Rabin Medical Center makes. And I want you to speak for a moment about it and about how you think it fits in to the Israeli vision of what you're trying to create medically, Jew, Arab, Palestinian, etc. You know, uh, our biggest challenge today is to make sure that people understand that Israel is not a conflict, but rather a country, a real society with real people, with real stories, and with real achievement. And I think very few people are able to tell the story of successful Israelis, ordinary people that accomplish extraordinary things like the Rabin Medical Center because the Rabin Medical Center is providing a, an important and acutely important service across the board from children to nursing to all the classic departments that every other hospital has and they do that with great talent with great devotion. Add the, to that the fact that they're leadership of their American Friends Association is so committed, so devoted. With their passion, with their enthusiasm, they're able to rally around um, uh, this issue and bring all this support. So I think it's a great celebration of what is good about our, our community and our society. I want you to speak for one more moment for me about the extent to which Israel is making an impact in places all over the world that have nothing to do with trying to settle an Arab dispute. Israel has a vast international aid program that has two components. One is to help societies in need all over the world. Uh, under that department, we uh, conducted some major strategic work over the years, introducing drip irrigation to Africa and certain uh, uh, medical procedures in other places. The second component is what is actually happening right now in the Philippines, is all the work that is, is being done in time of crisis. Uh, Israel um, is one of the quickest first responding nations in the world. Uh, we've been the first to come to Haiti, we've been the first in the Philippines. Uh, in Turkey, we were there before the Turkish first responders. Um, so we have a great tradition to follow. And again, the Rabin Medical Center is part and parcel of this DNA of the Israeli society, which is all about giving. It's not about taking, it's about giving. Ido Aharoni, the Consul General here in New York, who has given so much, not only to the State of Israel, but to World Jewry. Always an honor and pleasure to be with you Thank and to spend you. time with you. Thank you so much. Ido Aharoni. What a pleasure I have now standing with Chaim Hurwitz. And by the way, your family has a very interesting background. Tell us about it. Your father? My father was a typical Israeli. Yes coming from an eighth generation in Israel. Eight generations? Eight generation, yeah. Where and were you born? In Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. But my father was born in Jerusalem, and uh, so was my mother, and her father, and her grandfather. Amazing. My, the family came in 1799. From where, do you, do you know? Uh, yeah, Lithuania. Lithuania? On one part, and uh, the other part from uh, Iraq. Okay. Your father also founded a company. 
Yes, he founded, he was one of the founders of uh, Teva Pharmaceuticals, which is uh, the largest generic company today. And exactly. We're very proud to be here tonight. It's a great event. Speak to me for one moment, Chaim, about how you think Rabin Medical Center makes a unique contribution to Jewish life. I think that uh, it makes a unique difference in the life of people in Israel, both Arab and Israeli, particularly children, and particularly trauma uh, patients nowadays, and it's uh, by far the leading hospital all over Israel, and I would even dare say in the Middle East. Amazing hospital. If I go to the hospital, I see Jewish Israeli, Arab Israeli, I will see Palestinians there as well. To what extent can you speak to the way in which Israeli medicine bridges all kinds of gaps and embraces everyone? I think this is uh, what Israeli medicine is all about, to bridge between uh, Arab, Jewish, and uh, Palestinian, uh, which are different Arabs than the Israeli Arabs, and you know, treat everybody as equal and try to help them develop their own base of medicine in their own places. And I think that Rabin Medical Center is, sets a very good example for that, really. Chaim, it's an honor meeting you. Thank you. Kol Tuva Hatzlacha. I hope we get to speak with each other often. What a pleasure now I'm meeting with Henry Hank Nordoff. And my, uh, the news I got was that you are a very new member of the board of the Rabin Medical Center, correct? I'd say about uh, five hours. Very new. Well, Mazal Tov to you, first of all. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, by the way, you were approached, you knew about the hospital, but something about it was important enough for you to join the board. Try to articulate what it is that makes you so proud of the Rabin Medical Center and why you would put your time and effort into the Rabin Medical Center. Well, for me, it's about people. And, and the most important person to me was Barry Cohen. And he loved the Rabin Medical Center. And in talking with Barry over the years, some of that affection and love has rubbed off on me. Hank, you're a lovely human being. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Good meeting you Mark. I wish you Kol Tuva Haslacha all good success in everything you, you do. Thank you, sir. And it's wonderful sharing a moment with you here at the Rabin uh, Medical it was, Center. It was my pleasure. What a pleasure. I'm staying with Professor Rachmalevich. Yes. And by the way, are you still teaching? Yes. Where? All over. <laughs> What's your specialty? What's your specialty? I am, uh, my specialty is blood. Blood? I'm a hematologist. I was uh, the head of hematology in Hadassah for 25 years. Then I started another department in Wolfson. And now I spend two days a week with, uh, in uh, Davidov. Really? Yes. How does the Rabin Medical Center fit into your picture of where Israeli medicine is going today? First of all, I want to tell you that I was a very good friend of Rabin. I played tennis with him the day he was murdered. I think as far as the quality of medicine in Israel, the quality is very good. But the, what happened is that the population grew up like this and the expenditure for medicine stays like, flat. Maybe increases. That's the story. So all the problems we have is the problems of lack of infrastructure, enough beds, enough personnel. That's the main problem. Now talk to me about the Rabin Medical Center, how you I see think, it fits in. I think Rabin Medical Center is really a first-class medical center. I think in some subspecialties, it's the leaders in the country. For example? Uh, organ transplantation. Uh, I think in, in many, and also by the way, the, the hematology is very good, one of the best departments in the country. Uh, that's that's area I know. Uh, uh, Schneider also is a very good hospital, the children's hospital, very good. Heart surgery, very good. No, they are really leaders in, 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 in many areas. Take good care of the patients. I, I really enjoy working there. One more question on a, in a different vein. I want you to talk about how you view the way in which Israeli physicians, all those in the healthcare professions in Israel, how they treat the non-Jewish Israeli and the Palestinian. Ah. 
Let me tell you a story. I have now a, a publication, research work, with two Lebanese and one Iranian and myself, the same paper. I have educated eight Palestinian doctors. They are getting the best care in the world. I now have a doctor that I have trained who is opening a big department in the West Bank. No, in medicine is one of the best areas of uh, collaboration. So, doctor, does it give you some sense of optimism that one day there could be a real cooperative peace between no. Israel and the Palestinians? On a man-to-man -man basis, yes. easy. Look, you know, in Israel you have secular, you have Orthodox, and you have Arabs. You know when they get very friendly? Well, all of them are in the same room in a hospital. That's true. You're 100 percent right. I want you to know. Unfortunately, I was there and I saw it. You're an amazing man. Thank you. It's been an honor Tell meeting my you. Wife. Come here, wife. Tell my wife. This is Rachmiel. Yes. It's a Tova. pleasure to meet you, Tova. Thank you. I'm Tova. Yes. Your husband's extraordinary. How long have you been married? We are since 1990 together. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a pleasure meeting both of you. I wish you kol tuva hatzlacha. Thank you for spending a moment with us on Shalom TV. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. A wonderful pleasure I have now at the Rabbi Medical Center Gala. I'm standing with Rob Ivanhoe, who, and you're on the board, correct? Yes. By the way, you have been involved with the Rabbi Medical Center for quite a number of years now. I'd say at least 12 years, and I was the honoree. We were trying to figure it out about six years ago. Places for us, places yourself for us in terms of the Jewish community. Are you involved in Jewish life in general? Yes, I'm involved in many uh, Jewish causes and causes for Israel, Israel bonds, and uh, uh, UJA Federation, and many other things. And I was happy to actually visit the hospital personally last week. Did you? I was in Tel Aviv. Yes. Fabulous. So, try to articulate for us. What about the hospital touches you personally? Why are you proud to be on the board of the Rabin Medical Center? Well, this started, I think, uh, primarily during the Intifada. And there was so much happening where critical care was needed. And I was very moved by what the hospital was doing to care for people who were casualties on both sides of the Intifada. You said something very important, Rob, and I've been stressing this all night. There is a way in which Israeli medicine almost transcends politics. And it doesn't matter whether you're a Jewish Israeli, an Arab Israeli, or even a Palestinian. Doctors in Israel tend to care for the patient, and they don't even see past this human being. And I want to know if you've experienced anything like that yourself. Yes. As a matter of fact, when I was there last week, uh, I went into some critical care areas in the hospital. I saw patients after surgery, after giving birth, and they were of all denominations and all getting wonderful care. One more question for you. You were not only involved in Israel and Jewish life, you have seen the progression here in America. There are many people who are worried about the Jewish future today in America. As you and your wife is here as well, as you and your yes. family view Jewish life going forward, what, on the one hand, concerns you, and what, on the other hand, gives you a sense of optimism? Well, the fact that the uh, Jewish people have persevered and survived so many things over thousands of years gives us eternal hope for almost anything. Um, the situation in the Middle East is confounding. Uh, it gets more complicated each year when it seems that there are it's beyond comprehension. It gets even more complicated. And the challenges over there are something that I think that are of concern to all of us. And yet you do have faith in the future. I do. Yes, I do. This is Rob Ivanhoe. He is representing the Rabin Medical Center in a wonderful, wonderful way. You're a lovely human being. It's been an honor to speak a few moments with you on Shalom TV. Kol Tuv all good things for you. Thank you. Rabbi Ivan. My, my name is Rabbi Joshua Plowd, and I am the Executive Director of the American Friends of Rabin Medical Center, and we do great work in the United States to help raise awareness and funds to support the premier hospital in Israel, in Petach Tikva in Greater Tel Aviv, the Rabin Medical Center, best genetics institute, best cancer center, 
We do the most transplantations and most, most important of all, we are a bridge to peace. The way the Middle East can be with peaceful coexistence with Jews, Arabs and Christians treated alike without discrimination. We hope you can support us and visit the hospital in Israel. Thank you. We'd like to share with you now some of the program of tonight. We hope you enjoy it, and we hope you're always with us here on Shalom TV. The Medical Center of Israel is a bridge to peace. It promotes medical care with a global reach because it has the spirit of innovation and research. Let me take a moment, as I suggested earlier, to reminisce about Yitzhak Rabin and today's Middle East. Uh, I have interviewed every Prime Minister of Israel since uh, Yitzhak Shamir and uh, go through, and, and I think that uh, the person that has the most impact on me was Yitzhak Rabin, and, and I visited him in his home, and, and we had uh, a number of conversations together, and I think uh, the last time I saw him uh, was 11 days before the assassination, and having been in his home with him and with Liam and, and his family, and I'll never forget walking in, as I've said before, uh, in what I thought was a, uh, a place that I could have imagined anyone living, not necessarily, though, the Prime Minister of Israel, uh, a war hero and a man who had been so significant in the evolution of the state. And as I knocked at the door, Mrs. Rabin came to the door, and she opened the door, and sitting at a chair watching a soccer match, smoking, uh, with a phone at his ear, was the prime minister. And he said, come on in. And we sat down, and what was amazing to me is that there was no one answering the phone. He was answering the phone, uh, having conversations. He would refer to the soccer match with me, uh, and, and he said to me, I'm coming to America, uh, and let's get together. And so they asked me when he came to be uh, the MC of an event that was at over on, on the west side on the ship over there. And, uh, and I'll never forget, because I, I think it's one of the re remarkable things that ever happened to me uh, in terms of a, an engagement with a political figure. Uh, they asked me would I announce the fact that the prime minister and people with him had to leave, and they walked through uh, the marine band as they left, and, and before, though, they had gotten to halfway, he saw me standing on the, waiting for him to go, before I could go back to the podium, and he came all the way back uh, and said, you must come to Israel, you must talk more. And 11 days later, uh, the tragedy that took place. Since then, I know from conversations I've had about him uh, that he was the favorite Israeli Prime Minister of so many people that I respect, and that includes Bill Clinton, but it also includes lots of Israeli politicians. Ayal Lapid was just on my program recently, as was Naftali Bennett. You know, and I asked Yair Lapid, who's your favorite Prime Minister? Without a beat, he said, Yitzhak Rabin, and so many more. And we know why. Uh, we saw a man that grew in public office. We saw a man of commitment, and we saw a man of courage and a man of strength. And all of that uh, is an appropriate legacy to leave to the Ravine Medical Center. So I tell you that his legacy endures through this institution that bears his name. The Ravine Medical Center was a, and has become Israel's premier medical institution. It represents more than just superior medical care. It is about advanced tech technology, it's a bridge to peace, as I've said, a model for peaceful coexistence. This great hospital treats all Israelis with the same equal and excellent care, over one million patients annually. The staff of the hospital numbering some 4,500 caring and compassionate doctors and nurses treats Jews, Muslims, Christians alike. The Davidoff Center, Cancer Center of Rabin is the leading institution of its kind in the Middle East, as is the Rikhnati Genetics Institute. And soon the most advanced emergency and trauma center will open at Rabin. Seventy, think about this, 70 percent of all organ transplantations in Israel take place at Rabin. 
In 2012, the hospital received 63 million Israeli shekels in revenue for clinical research, a 70% increase from 2011, toppling the list for Israeli hospitals. The work of the people here, the American Friends of Rabin Medical Center, is vital to continuing the kind of work that I just reflected on. Uh, a great hospital in Israel, and it needs your help. It is an integral part of the work, and we join together in celebrating this best of Israel and the best of America. What does it make our hospital so uh, such a good hospital? And I really, after se or more than seven years in job, I really think it's the best hospital in Israel. First is the spirit of its employees. There is a special spirit in our hospital. We see it in patient satisfaction and employee satisfaction. Secondly is the excellence and the level of professional work of our doctors, nurses, which is well acknowledged and it is, uh, we see it in the fact that we do the most complicated operation. Just the other day we have implemented another artificial heart. We are the leading hospital that is doing this procedure in Israel. And maybe last but not least, the strong circle of friends all over the world, in Israel, in the United States, especially in New York, and in Europe. Thanks to your help, we are able to provide better treatment. We have better facilities, and we can dream to do the best that medicine can do to mankind. Thank you so much, and good evening. Barry believed passionately in the Rabin Medical Center and the work it, had, it has been doing for all these years. He loved working with the American friends here and all the interesting people he got to know both here and in Israel. With every passing year, his pride grew at the achievements being reached by the Medical Center and he saw it as a beacon of light illuminating the best of Israel. With his worldwide connections in the pharmaceutical industry, 35 years at Merck and another 20 after that till he left us, he developed a vital interest in medicine and a constant excitement in research and its progress. This is what interested him about the Rabin Medical Center and its potential. This is what he wanted for them and for Israel. In November last year, he spent some time as a patient in the hospital. On his return to New York, Barry could not say, he could not praise um, highly enough the treatment and the care he received there and which he was able to experience firsthand. And this was the reason it was so important for him to stand here on this very stage as he did last year, so he could express his thanks in person. My family and I are so thankful for all that was done for him during his stay there. I am sure he led them a I'm sure he led them all a dance and could not have been an, an easy patient. But nevertheless, I am so grateful that he had a happy experience there, supported by all his friends and particularly in the hospital he cared so much about. That will always be a comforting thought for us and we are forever indebted to those kind people who were with him by his side. It, it, it is my hope and prayer that the Rabin Medical Center will always be safe from harm and that its lovely campus will continue to grow and thrive. This says American Friends of Ravine Medical Center proudly established Abraham and Yvonne Cohen Cardiac and Medical Research Fund at Israel's Ravine Medical Center. Then it says, 
and they've asked me would I just repeat this, in gratitude to Barry and Yvonne Cohen and their beloved family for their outstanding leadership, generosity, and friendship. Thank you. Lovely. You are right. <clears throat> Friendship plays an important role in my personal philosophy. One of the greatest compliments that God gets in the Bible is that Benjamin was God's friend. The question is, is God our friend? Friendship is more important, believe it or not, than love. Love can become egotistic. You get something for it. You love a woman, I do. She's beautiful, and you get something because after all, you are with her. Friendship is so altruistic. You expect nothing, but you get everything. Um, the choice of a friend is almost by destiny. Sometimes it's in school, you sit next to a girl or a boy, you listen to the professor, and you smile, so that she, you become friends. And the bond is a smile. Sometimes it's a story. You hear a story, you interpret it, you retell it, no longer the same, and because of the story, the storyteller and the one who listened to it, become friends. And sometimes it takes 10 years for the two friends to meet and simply say, hey, haven't I heard this story from you? So I believe in friendship very, very much. I think that as a Jew, the Jewish people, when we want to give a compliment to someone, we said, he is our friend, a friend of the Jewish people, a friend of Israel. It's rare this kind of friendship, because it's gratuitous. It could very well not have taken place. But once it's there, it dominates your life. It gives a kind of music to it. And therefore, Barry was a friend. We loved, Marion and I loved the dinners that we had with uh, Yvonne and Barry. Just to listen to him, he was a great storyteller. Second, he experiences from all over. You know, I thought I was traveling. No, he was traveling. <laughs> I thought that uh, I knew everything about him. But each time I met him, I learned something new. There was a certain generosity in Barry. His entire life was generosity. And that is why he did what he did, because he could not do it. And uh, for, for, therefore, for the Rabin Center to be involved with whatever Barry did is important to me because Rabin was a friend of mine. It's Hak Rabin we met during the Six Day War. And that friendship lasted until he died. We used to meet a lot in New York and in Israel, and talk, and talk. I would ask questions about his military career, about his military experiences, and he asked me about philosophy. It, it was an enriching encounter. And I remember one afternoon, it was the end of the Sabbath, I was sitting with Marion, reading books, and uh, we speak always to Israel, a lot, every day almost. And we spoke to a friend of ours, a mutual friend of many people here. And all of a sudden, Yossi says on the telephone, I heard a shot. He said, I'll call you back. He called me back two minutes later. It was Rabin. Then he said, he's dead. I couldn't put down the receiver, just couldn't. Next day, I went to Israel to the funeral. And there was Clinton on the plane. 
for the only and first and only time in my life, the entire flight, I couldn't say a word. I just couldn't. So that's why, as you can see, uh, many things happen in one's life. And all we can do is tell the story. Thank you for coming. We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support Shalom TV with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double high or more, to the nonprofit organization Jewish Education in Media. Simply visit the Shalom TV website homepage and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check made out to GEM, to Jem, Post Office Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive on DVD with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.